I'm Bernadette Wagner and I'm pleased to welcome you to Healing Hope and Health. As a community outreach coordinator for Hospice Washington County, one of the greatest parts of my job is interacting with local businesses that choose to support Hospice Washington County's vision, mission, and goals. My next guest represents one of those businesses, a, bu a business well known for its charitable contributions and for giving back to the community. It's my pleasure to welcome once again to Healing Hope and Health, Christy Turner, director of Bella Salon and Spa. She joins us today to talk about the latest way in which Bella Salon and Spa has supported Hospice of Washington County. Welcome, Christy. Thank you. Nice to have you on the program. Thank you. Nice to be back. I'd also like to welcome Morgan Gower to today's, sh to today's show. So as not to steal Christy's thunder, I won't explain just now why Morgan is here. I'll let her, I'll let that be a surprise. Welcome, Morgan. Hi, Bernadette. Thanks for being here. Christy, can you tell our viewers a little bit about Bella Salon and Spa, where it's located, your number of employees, and some of the services you offer? Sure, thank you. Uh, we're located at 1691 Langley Drive, uh, that's in Hagerstown, and um, we've been there since about 2001. Um, we are a salon of about 30 employees. Uh, we offer um, any of your spa services from massage to facial body treatments, eyelash extensions, um, manicures, pedicures, to full service salon as well, and offering uh, hair extensions as well. That's so, great, thank that's you. That's great. Um, before we discuss your latest support of Hospice of Washington County and why Morgan's here today, maybe you can tell us about some of the efforts uh, that your shop has done to support hospice in the past. Sure, um, last year we did do a raffle, um, and we did a, a, it was called a holiday raffle, where we sold $10 tickets, um, and then somebody got to enter a drawing, or the winner, or all, all people got to enter a drawing uh, to win possibly a $1,000 gift certificate, and the proceeds um, of that raffle went to Doey's house. So, um, and we're super excited because it went really well and we're gonna be doing that again this year. So that's gonna kick off in November. Um, so you are welcome, anybody's welcome to stop in, purchase a $10 raffle ticket for a chance to win $1,000 gift certificate at Bella. And um, again, the proceeds will benefit Doey's house. And you know, this Doey's house is a community hospice house. It's the yeah. first in our community where people who can, re uh, they can receive services and care there, whether or not they can afford it or not. Correct. It was uh, Neil Glessner's vision, so we're happy that you're supporting that. Thank you. So as part of our 35th anniversary celebration, we had a super soup contest in which we had 10 uh, employees make soups and then everybody else was invited to, uh, for a minimum $10 donation, uh, taste all the soups, and then they got to vote on their favorite soup. And we raised $500 for Coast Hospice, wow. which is our sister hospice in Mombasa, Kenya. And Morgan Yay. is our winner. <laughs> and Morgan, I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about uh, what soup you made and um, how many, how many uh, people did it serve? I made, um, uh, I named it Comfy Cream of Crab. Um, it served, I made for about 25 and we sold out, sold out um, pretty quickly. So That's right. It was the first soup gone. It was the first soup and gone. And who was the second place, what was the second place uh, soup? Second place soup was actually, the name is, we'll throw you off a little. Um, it was uh, cheese, sausage, and spinach tortellini. Okay. but it was amazing. Um, and I think that was Pam Ricker. It was. She's one of our nurses. Yes. Right, okay. And uh, how much did we raise for? We raised roughly around $500. That's great. Wow. Now, That's great. Uh, Christy, I wanted mm -hmm. to give you an opportunity to award um, uh, Morgan a prize. We're so grateful that you offered to get, donate um, a spa package to our first place winner okay. and um, give uh, you a chance to do that on air. Wonderful. Okay. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I'm thankful to present to you a spa package of a um, manicure, pedicure, and a choice of massage or facial. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Well, well deserved. The soup yes. was delicious. Thank and of you. course, we're always um, grateful to Bella for all sure. their support. And we're grateful for your upcoming support for Doey's House this holiday. Awesome during the holiday raffle. Absolutely, our pleasure. I'd like to thank Christy and Morgan for joining us on Healing Hope and Health. From holding a holiday fundraiser in support of Doey's House, 
our community's first ever inpatient hospice house, to donating a gift certificate for our chef, the winning chef of our Super Soup contest, Bella Salon Spa always finds creative ways to support hospice of Washington County. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this short commercial break. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care. Close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. Arbor's Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. I was still working full time as a professional photographer and somebody would be talking to me and my wife would be sitting beside me interpreting. Well, first of all, Linda made me comfortable. I also had a lot of confidence in her. All the adjustments we made were making positive results. You don't know what you're missing until you realize that after you get your hearing aids. Let McCollum Hearing Center help you rediscover the sounds of your life. Hi, I am Dr. Olenzak at the Pain and Spine Institute. I specialize in the most advanced procedures and technology available in pain management. At your visits and procedures, you will always see me for continuity of care. I would like to thank all of my patients for allowing me to provide you with the specialized care that you need. To give you this level of care requires a team. This is your team at the Pain and Spine Institute. To become a patient, call 301-739-7900 or go to painfree-md.com. Welcome back to Healing Hope and Health. I'm glad you're still with us. Our next guest, Pamela Rutherford, joins us to talk about her dear friend, Scott Boyer, and Hospice of Washington County's My Wish program. On April 10th, 2014, Evelyn Crawford's son, Scott Boyer, was, uh, who was under hospice care, was granted a very special wish. Pam, who is a close friend to the whole Crawford family, will share what this meant wish to Scott and also his family and friends. Welcome, Pam. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Sure. So um, you were close to Scott. How long did you know Scott? I met Scott about six months before he was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so total about five years. Okay. All right. And what was he like? What sort of person was he? Uh, Scott was larger than life. He was a big overgrown kid. Okay. <laughs> um, his nieces and nephews never had to worry about who was going to go out and play in the snow or the mud or anything like that, who was going to come to their sporting events. Scott was always there. And what were his special interests? Um, he loved to golf, but more than that, he loved the Maryland Terrapins. Okay. He was a huge basketball fan, um, tons of memorabilia, a lot of baseball caps and clothing. He was a season ticket holder. To um, all the different sporting events? To the football okay. events. But he um, started a unique tra to, excuse me, tradition with his twin brothers who are big Duke fans, all being basketball fans. So when the Duke the Blue Devils would play the Maryland Terrapins, whether if it was in North Carolina or in Maryland, they always went. And um, I always had the pleasure of painting their bald heads oh. <laughs> to represent their teams. So he was definitely a diehard I'm Terrapins I'm fan. I'm sure you have some great pictures of that. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And um, can you tell us a little bit about what Scott's wish was and how it played out for him? Um, well, being such a fan of all Maryland athletics and being a season ticket holder and a huge basketball fan, um, for Scott to be able to have Terrapin players and Terrapin coaches come in and recognize him, appreciate his support, and just spend time with him talking about different events and allowing him to forget even only for a short period of time that he was ill. Right. He was allowed right. to laugh and joke. Um, at one point he said to one of the gentlemen, you know, where did you get that shirt? I haven't you know, gotten one like that. And without hesitation, you know, he said, you want this one? And he took it off and handed it to Scott. He's like, that's yours too. 
And so it was two Maryland Terrapin fan, uh, players that came? Yes, it was um, Des Wells and Juan Dixon. Mm -hmm. um, and it was actually Juan Dixon that gave him his shirt. That's cool. Um, and they presented Scott with a box of all kinds of memorabilia, official team shoes that were signed that you can't just buy anywhere. You know, right. they were made for the they team. They were special. And just spent, you know, time with him, treating him like a fan, right. you know, and appreciating his interest in what they do. Like a healthy fan. They, exactly. They, right, they were focused on him as a person, not his right. illness. Right, right. And um, I heard that he also got assigned to basketball. Yes, he did, and it's in a, a keepsake glass case. Um, some of the things we actually um, put in the casket with Scott when he did pass, um, and other things didn't quite fit in there. But it, to watch his face light up, when someone's sick like that, um, they kind of lose control of their choices in life and everything becomes treatments and appointments and that type of thing. And for that short period of time, he was just Scott, the Maryland Terrapins fan. Yeah, that's special. Yes. That's really special. So that's what it meant to Scott. What did it mean to those who love Scott to see him like that, to see this wish uh, play out and make his dream come true? Oh, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, like I said, you get so caught up in caring for someone um, that you f you lose sight of the fact that they still enjoy things. And to be able to have an opportunity to give something to him that he could laugh and relish and be joyous about, and we could all laugh and be lighthearted and joke around about, um, it really was a sense of being able to contribute to a, a wonderful day for him, mm -hmm. um, a, a great quality of life for him, even for that short period of time. Yeah, yeah. and I imagine, uh, well, maybe I should ask this as a question. I was wondering if now that provides, uh, that happy, joyous memory provides a balance to the remembrance of, of him suffering and being sick. Oh, I think it does. Um, in Crawford's store, they have right behind the counter a picture of Scott with Des and Juan, oh, that's you know, neat. from that day. You know, that's something you can look back and remember that, well, you know, that was a great day. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't take away the sickness, but you can take away the bad feelings that are involved in that yeah. and, uh, and just celebrate. You know, the family was there as a family picture. Everybody's smiling. You know, everybody's happy. That's great. And they really came in and with a sense of appreciation for how much Scott loved the Maryland Terrapins. And what would you say to other families who have somebody in their hospice care? Would you encourage them to participate in the My Wish program? I definitely would. Mm -hmm. um, I think it gives you, as a family member, an opportunity to give something. Often we feel helpless, mm -hmm. that there's not much we can do for our loved one in that situation. Right, right. And it gives you that choice to be able to do something for them and to be able to bring that light back into their heart, back into their eyes, back into their smile. Well, thank you so much for being here, Pamela, and for sharing uh, Scott's story. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. I'd like to thank Pam for joining us today. I'm grateful to her for telling us about Scott's wish and what it meant to him. Sally Nichols, the prize-winning children's author, said, quote, there's no point in having wishes if you don't at least try to make them come true, end of quote. Our point exactly. Hospice of Washington County may not be able to make every wish come true, but we are certainly willing to try. If you know someone under hospice care, please contact us so that together we can make their dreams come true. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. Barber's Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. 
I was still working full time as a professional photographer and somebody would be talking to me and my wife would be sitting beside me interpreting. Well, first of all, Linda made me comfortable. I also had a lot of confidence in her. All the adjustments we made were making positive results. You don't know what you're missing until you realize that after you get your hearing aids. Let McCollum Hearing Center help you rediscover the sounds of your life. From the smallest item of jewelry to the largest ceramic elephant, every 10,000 Villages handcrafted product makes a remarkable journey. All over the world our products travel similar paths, over thousands of miles and years of artistic tradition. Our handcrafted gifts represent work that builds villages and sustains souls. They are the dream of a better life made real. Every product is a miracle. Welcome back. Hospice Washington County is well known for providing quality end-of-life care that is both compassionate and professional. Equally important, but not quite as well known, is the incredible support that the Hospice Washington County Bereavement Team provides to those coping with the death of a loved one. Losing someone you love is always difficult, but thanks to Hospice Washington County, you don't have to grieve alone. Today, I'm pleased to introduce Lisa Lynn, who joins us to talk about her experience with the Hospice Washington County Bereavement Department. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. Well, let me first say I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank um, you. And I'm grateful that you're here to uh, help uh, educate the public about our services. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, your experience and about your loved one. I lost my fiance, Rick Wolfinger, um, very suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, so he was not in hospice care. Mm -hmm. He died of a brain aneurysm. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't know that I could go and get counseling for that. I thought counseling with hospice was for people who had been in hospice care. Right. And it was wonderful. To How be able did you to get find that. out about that? Through friends. Mm -hmm. Through friends. Um, I had a couple people that had gone and had counseling with hospice and a couple friends that work there. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, you know, you can go to re go and get counseling. And, you know, initially I wasn't really ready for that because you always think, well, what can anybody do for me? Mm -hmm. You can't change the situation. Right. So what can they possibly say to make it better? Mm -hmm. um, so it took me a while to talk myself into it, but then I thought, can it hurt? Mm -hmm. No, it can't hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's worth a try because it could possibly help. And it did. Okay. It did. And um, these services are provided free of charge. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I had counseling free of charge with someone who just really understood and cared Mm -hmm. but was a third party. It wasn't someone who was directly involved. Right. So it wasn't someone who had a vested interest, but she was interested in me and helping me mm -hmm. get through mm -hmm. this horrible time. Right. Um, and I know that Hospice Bereavement Department offers individual, uh, family, couples, group counseling, and also uh, ongoing support groups. Did you, what, which of these services did you take advantage of? I did individual counseling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't at a point where I felt comfortable speaking in front of other people. Mm -hmm. um, it was good that I could just function mm -hmm. and go to work. Um, the counseling was, you know, she was very flexible mm -hmm. and she worked around when I could get there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and really it was, it really got me through. It mm -hmm. really did. It's was was there one thing in particular that she shared with you that you held on to and that uh, became uh, your lifeline to um, sanity, to out of grief, your ladder out of grief? One thing I remember her saying is that you still need to have Rick time. She said it's going to be different, but you still need Rick time. You need time to think about him and spend time on his memory and 
your relationship and you know things like that and i i never looked at it that way i mm -hmm. felt like oh you're just dwelling on it but mm -hmm. you're really not so sometimes just having uh what you do innately validated is so wonderfully important yes yes yeah. mm -hmm. um what was the best advice that you received um from through the bereavement process either from somebody in hospice or through a friend or mm -hmm. something you'd want to pass on to somebody else that all grief looks different. Mm -hmm. Everybody grieves at a different pace and there's no timeline for it. There's mm -hmm. no, now you need to be here at a certain time and you know, you need to get over it in a, in a certain amount of time and that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. um, everybody grieves at a different rate. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, is that you can't ignore it. Right. You have to deal with it. Otherwise, you will always be dealing with it. So you have to deal with it and address it head on. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll always be dealing with it. And so from what you're saying, I'm, I'm guessing that you would encourage other people who have suffered a loss of a loved one to seek counseling, either at hospice or somewhere else? Absolutely, because mm -hmm. like I said, it can't hurt mm -hmm. and it can only help. Right. So you want to give it a chance mm -hmm. because the impact you're going to have to deal with this one way or another. Right. Yeah. And you, and you do want to get through it. And, you know, I've always said to myself, a nervous breakdown is not an option. Mm -hmm. So I have to find out, you know, how I'm, how I am going to deal with this. Right. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here today, Lisa. Absolutely. Thank you. I'd like to thank Lisa for joining us on today's program and for talking about the professional grief counseling she received through Hospice Washington County. The sense of loss may never completely go away, but grief is diminished when it's shared with others and validated. Tom Zumba, an author and speaker, said that in order to heal, quote, every expression of grief that wants to be felt and honored and given its space must be allowed, end of quote. If you are suffering due to the loss of a loved one, please allow Hospice Washington County to help. Call us today at 301-791-6360. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Barbara's Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. From the smallest item of jewelry to the largest ceramic elephant, every 10,000 Village's handcrafted product makes a remarkable journey. All over the world, our products travel similar paths, over thousands of miles and years of artistic tradition. Our handcrafted gifts represent work that builds villages and sustains souls. They are the dream of a better life made real. Every product is a miracle. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call Hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. Welcome back to Healing Hope and Health. Sometimes wonderful happenings take you by surprise and you think, ah, life is good. That's what happened to me a few weeks ago. I was sitting at work and our next guest called out of the blue and said, my friends and I would like to donate 12 handmade blankets to Hospice of Washington County. It is my pleasure to introduce Sharon Curtis, a three-year member and newly elected president of the Ladies Auxiliary of the Knights of Columbus. Welcome, Sharon. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. 
Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about the Ladies Auxiliary? What is your mission and how many members do you have? Yes, the Ladies Auxiliary kind of supports the Knights of Columbus. Um, we are their ladies. And um, we have probably about 20 members. Mm -hmm. And we're always looking for more members. And um, we support things like um, St. Mary's House mm -hmm. uh, for unwed mothers. And um, we have, we support all of the religious ed groups, uh, giving them money. We also give money to uh, Micah's Backpack. So you're, you do a lot of charity so work. So we do a lot of charity work because our mission is to um, be in the community and to help the community and to be Christ for the community. Okay. And everyone wants to matter and know that others are thinking of them. Uh, what motivated your group to let our uh, patients know that you were thinking about them? Well, from experience from my mom, when they get further along in their um, disease, they get really, really cold. So your mom had hospice care? Yes, she did. Okay. And um, I was trying to figure out how to keep my mom warm. And I said, you know, these blankets are so cool and they will keep them warm. And that's so much more important than anything else is mm -hmm. that warmth and that coziness and knowing that there's love there. Right. So the, these blankets were made for people who um, you'll never know, but you wanted them to know that you were thinking about them. Yes. That's and great. they were all blessed also by um, the priest that's the friar for the Knights of Columbus. Okay, that's great. And uh, you um, made fleece blankets. Can you tell us a little bit about the project, what it involved? Yes, we had to go and buy the material. We went, um, one of the other members and I went, and we had to, we looked for the best color we could find because we thought we need to give them joy. Mm -hmm. And that was our motive for the, the, the bright, and the cheery, bright colors. cheery colors. Right. And we wanted to make sure that there was some for men mm -hmm. and some for ladies because um, we didn't want the guys to feel like, oh, they're sissy looking or the females to go, oh, these are nice, but you know, they don't speak to me. We also included cats and dogs mm -hmm. in the patterns. And um, then we went to work cutting them. You, all you had to do is cut them, and then you cut slits, and you knot them together. And it's very forgiving, which is a good thing. Um, so it so was it's, pretty, it's fleece, and then you cut notches you cut into it? You cut notches into it. And you have two layers, is that it? You have two layers. So and then you knot really them warm. together. Yes, it makes it really, really warm. And we um, tried to use the blizzard ones, which even make it warmer. Oh, that's the great. Blizzard. That's great. And you made 12 blankets? 12 blankets. Okay. And, and how many members worked on this project? Um, probably about seven or eight. Mm -hmm. uh, we had three different sessions. Mm -hmm. And um, it, we usually spent about two hours. Two Can you finish hours. one blanket in two hours? Oh, yeah. in one day we finished um, three. Wow. With as many working on it. Mm -hmm. um, now I've caught the bug and I have to buy and uh, make some for Christmas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what other activities does your group participate in? Well, we do um, one that's coming up is one that we're very proud of and it's called um, God's Special Children and they're teenagers to adults that are um, handicapped mm -hmm. and um, they get to come and have um, food and a dance and a DJ. Oh, that's great. And, and when will that be? That will be on um, November 21st. Oh, that's Over great. at the Knights. And um, we also doing a pumpkin patch thing for the kids um, for Halloween and everything else. So we try to do as many cool things as we can. Well, thank you so much for all you do and for being here today. Thank you. I'd like to thank Sharon for joining me today and thank all the members of the Ladies Auxiliary for creating such tangible signs of support and comfort. Giving to others, to those who we don't know and who will never be able to thank us, is an act of selflessness and perhaps what we're all called to do. Ray Bradbury, the famous author, said it this way, we are cups constantly and quietly being filled. The trick is knowing how to tip ourselves over and let the beautiful stuff out, end of quote. I'm Bernadette Wagner, and I want to thank you for joining me for today's show. May your cups be filled, but more importantly, may they be tipped over so that your beauty is spilled out for everyone to see. 
Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time.